does do a lot of interviews, so I feel very privileged to be sitting down with DJ Muggs. What's happening, brother? Welcome, man. Feeling? Thanks for having me, man. Hell hey, yeah. Soul Assassins 3, Death Valley is mm-hmm. out. Yeah, man. And what a track listing. Wow. Man. Some motherfuckers on there. Some motherfuckers on there for real. Yeah, some of my favorite new rappers, man, like, you know, Bodie James. Shout out to Bodie. Shit, you, got, the, you got Ghostface on there. TF. Oh, yeah. Then we got some of the classics and shit. Yeah, Ghost and Gun. Shout out to TF, man. I was going to say, like, it's crazy because I remember the source uh, uh, advertisements for the very first Soul Assassins album, which was, what, 97 or 98? Mm, 97, what? yeah, man. So, like, fast forward, uh, I don't even want to talk about how many years that is because it'll age you and me a lot. But for you, like, what's, what has changed about putting together a Soul Assassins album after, you know, 25 years later or whatever it is? Um and what kind of still fuels you to be so passionate about this mm. shit? Because you are active still to this day. You, you know, mm. you're always dropping projects, joint projects, working with up and coming artists, man. Yeah. Um, part one was um, back then. It was pre mixtapes. Mm-hmm. Before mixtapes got really crazy. So doing a record like this was something unique. You know what I mean? There was only a few motherfuckers doing that. Where I just, I, a lot of people was asking me to do tracks for them for their albums, and I was like, man, I'm good, man. I just rather just build my group and do my shit, but I'm, y'all can come and be on my shit. Mm-hmm. Then once the mixtape era kicked off, it, everything was just mixtapes. So then it was just, it was, what's well, nothing's really special about making these records no more because you can go get a fly ass mixtape. Yeah, you know for I mean? sure. So yeah. I was like, all right, I don't think I'm gonna do another one. So I just, I record all the time. So recording, the homies come through, record, record, stacking songs, stacking songs. And I was like, oh, I got some shit right here. What am I gonna do? I was like, I was I had three or four different ideas of the way to put it out, and then um, I was just gonna probably drop a song every two months for mm-hmm. the next three years, and then Gold Watch came through, and I was like, Yo, I need you to help me figure something out, man. I need to build something visually for this record because I don't feel like just doing um, videos. Yeah, the video I saw the I, I only saw the trailer, but the trailer yeah. looked like a fucking full fledged cinematic yeah, experience. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I was like, I'm tired of videos, man. What can we do, bro? Because I'm not putting this record out. I was like, let's let's build something that's like 10, 15 minutes long. He's like, man, that's a that's that's gonna be hard. And I was like, you know, shit. And um, we started. We sh- we shot and um, pre prep for like a month. We ended up shooting in Death Valley, um, Oakland, San Francisco, Vegas. LA and ended up being a 34 minute movie. Crazy. Yeah, we shot videos. We shot music videos and they're in the movie on the TV, like in the trap house. Mayhem's videos on the TV in the trap house. Rock Marcy's building a bomb. That's crazy. And, um, you know, his, he, his video, I'm watching his video in, in my house while, while he's building a bomb in the video. I'm holding the bomb. That's a fucking crazy. So it's psychedelic. It's like, I don't know if you're familiar with Alejandro Jodorowsky. So I compare it more like a Jodorowsky meets Pink Floyd mm-hmm. with, with hip hop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy because I feel like not, like you said, back in the day, what you did was unique. And I feel like in today's climate, doing a 34 minute like mini movie is unique as well. And right. we've seen like movies to go along with albums. But I feel like people don't do that shit no more because they're like so worried about like the microwavable attention span of people instead of like, yo, let me do something dope, unique, creative. Yeah, I did it for me, man. I can give a fuck, you know what I mean? I did it all for me. Like, how can I keep myself entertained? Yeah. And you know, how can I do something that's just fun just to get up and do every day? Some a little challenging, some I ain't done before. So that was the driving force behind it for me. You know yeah. I mean, I done did everything I've set out to do years ago. So, you know, just keep, just keep tricking my brain and stretching myself and having a good time doing this shit. Is that what keeps you going? It's like, I'm doing this for me, really. Like, I'm I do doing- it for me. But you know, at the same time, man, I love, I love the, the kind of music we make, this underground hip hop shit that mm-hmm. it's nothing different than I've always made. But, you know, I figure I can come here now and just champion what's going on and just build, build this culture and make it bigger and stretch it, make yeah. it stronger. You know what I mean? Sure. Inspire the youth. And then also... Give guidance and, and 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 let them tap into my fan base. You know what I mean, and, and grab some of these youngsters and like show them show them the way. Yeah, it's been dope to see like your run just continue. And I I just had this talk with Al recently because I'm always trying to push rappers to do albums with Alchemist. That you know I just did this with Jada Kiss on the podcast. I was like, why haven't you done a whole album with Alchemist? No shit, huh? that'd be crazy. <laughs> that'd be crazy. But like to see you like you know you're like in, like, like always working with artists and like doing like full fledged like bodies of work. Whether it's like Jay Worthy or Mayhem Loren, like you're very much like you know it feels like you're still in your peak and you're still like 
like you said, the 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 underground shit has changed over the years. The quote unquote underground hip hop shit has definitely changed from what like it might have been in like two thousand, two thousand one or whatever. Mm. But like you're still like fully engaged and like pushing that culture. And like to me, that's that's very dope because you know, just from a DJ perspective, like I find the little things that keep me still like motivated and engaged to try to like still listen to new artists. You know what I mean? And and um so it's just dope to see you still, you know, fully fucking in it, bro. So. Yeah, man. I'm, you know, just having a good time, man. And, you know, just be able to just hang out and kick it with the homies and um, talk some shit, you know what I mean? What was the uh, the homage to Death Valley? Why Soul, Soul Assassin's 3 Death Valley on this? Because that, that's the title of the movie. Okay, you know, that's the movie. That's okay, so the 34-minute movie. movie that comes with it. It's, it's Death Valley. You know, it's the hottest fucking place on earth. It is. You know what I'm saying? So, and it's, you know, and one of the things in the movie is I left L.A. to get away from the heat. Mm. You know, go to Death Valley. Yeah, it's ironic, right? It's very ironic for sure. What was uh, for you? Because you know, there's always so many. When you have so many moving parts on a body of work, when it comes to getting the artists to like uh, sign off on stuff, do you have to deal with that kind of stuff. Yeah, every I, you know, a lot of everybody on this record, I've had relationships with them in the past. You know, so it was pretty easy, man. It was right. pretty. This this record was pretty easy. There was nothing nothing crazy. Yeah, and also like a lot of guys are independent, right? Or yeah, one hundred percent. And, and they, they run in the game a little bit different these days. Like you know, before dealing with majors and dealing with labels and the sign offs and yeah. the clearances and the sample clearances, she was a headache. You know, a lot of times right now you can be under the radar with a lot of this shit. And stuff well, like I always Static Selector always told me because I was always like, "Hey, bro, like you guys clear clear these samples," and he's like, "Man, he's like, look, bro." Like we just let shit fly, and if we gotta get it cleared later, that means it's doing something. <laughs> Basically, they, if it's under a certain number, they ain't even coming. They ain't wasting their time, you know. Right. I mean? they, it's like, and if it pops off later, then you know it's all good. Well, you know what sucks, dude, is like, I don't know if you've if you've experienced this from your perspective, but a lot of like major label artists or the labels will be very specific to make sure, like, I, I'll play me something with no sample. They oh, don't yeah. even want to clear samples anymore. They don't want to deal with that shit. Because they get hit hard, man. Like, like a major's going to have to deal with that shit, you know what I mean? And they're going to get hit because it's a major, and they, they know they got bread, so... They yeah, go, it's different they, if, they if, don't it, if, if the it, lawyer from it, Universal's it, reaching out as opposed to, like... It freezes up their whole project. You know, thank God, now they just got to pull a song or two off a digital streaming site instead of pulling all the records off the fucking shelves. Mm -hmm. That shit was crazy. A lot easier, yeah. Imagine having to go to every Rick, oh, Zia Records. 500,000 records out of Tower Records and, and you know, all that shit. Did that happen before? You've seen it happen with Biz. You've seen it happen with um, um, Truth Hurts with Dre with the Rock Kim wow. song. That was a big Bollywood sample. Yeah. They put that shit out and that shit got took that shit off the shelves. That's a lot of fucking money to eat. You're pulling a fucking million pieces of vinyl off the shelves. 